Welcome, everybody, to this Facebook Live. My name is Fabio Huitrago. I'm the course director with Roatan Dive Academy. I am also an ecologist, and today we're going to be talking about the Paddy Coral, Coral Conservation Specialty Course. Uh, we're going to have as a, as a guest Peter Kokish, who is also an instructor and works for the Reef Restoration Initiative here in Roatan. So remember these uh, Facebook Lives and these workshops that we are conducting are being done to use the time efficiently as we have travel restrictions and uh, also to refresh or to uh, get the information to you on the following courses that you should take or you can take when you are able to travel and come down to Roatan. So if you are interested in, uh, in, in contributing to the conservation of the corals, then this is going to be uh, a very interesting course for you. We have already done a Facebook Live uh, last week on the Underwater Naturalist course, and we're going to do another course, uh, another Facebook Live on the Fish Identification course. And also we have done a Facebook Live on the, on the Lion Fish Control course. So all of these courses together come uh, to, to generate, together with the Bay Island Reef Restoration Initiative, that, that's a different course, uh, make the ecological courses that we offer here in Roatan Dive Academy. Okay, so we're going to be talking now on this uh, course that is called the Paddy uh, Coral Conservation Specialty. I'm just going to go very fast on the main uh, attributes of the course. This is obviously just a brief of the course. There is a lot more of information that uh, uh, com compose, uh, compiles, it is compiled within the course. Right, so in this case, we're going to be talking about the, the specialty very briefly, and we have to start uh, mentioning that, uh, sorry, I just got to the last slide instead of the first one, but uh, we just have to mention that uh, for starting the course, it is important for uh, people to understand what is a coral, right? So we're going to be talking first on what is the definition of a coral? What do we consider a coral? Lots of people are confused and they think that Corals are plants, but actually corals are animals, and they are invertebrates that build a colony. And you have lots of uh, tiny little organisms that are part of the colony that are building an skeleton underneath, and that's what is growing to the, the bone of the coral, the skeleton of the coral that we know, uh, that we find in some places, right, that is hard or in the shape of a, a, a sea fan, for example, if it is a soft coral. So it is an animal, right? It is an invertebrate that builds colonies and they are genetically identical, right? And each of the animals have the shape of, of this uh, sac-like polyp, right? And they have tentacles around the mouth. And basically what they do with the tentacles, they have the tentacles out and they are just uh, grabbing, catching, uh, zooplankton, tiny little microorganisms that float with the current. So they just grab them and they bring them down to the mouth so they can feed on the animals that are floating on the currents. So these, uh, this photo is from our friend uh, Bob Herb. And thank you, Bob, for all the beautiful photos that you have allowed us uh, to use during this Facebook Live. And you can see here on this uh, photo, you can see the little tiny polyps. In this case, there is lots of tiny polyps that are basically, uh, basically closed. But you have an idea of what a colony looks like. This is a star coral from here in Roatan. And what I wanted to show with that is the number of, of polyps of individual animals that live within a colony. Also, um, a uh, paddy coral conservation specialist should know how to classify the corals, right? So we're going to go back one step and talk about the classification of the animal kingdom. This is something that we have already covered on the Underwater Naturalist Facebook Live that we did last week. So I'm just going to mention very fast the different phylums that we have uh, within the animal kingdom in which all the animals are classified. So we have the porifera, which is the phylum that com compiles all the sponges. We have the annelids phylum, which is the uh, ringed worms. Then we have the mollusks, having all the, the shells, the uh, conchs, and also the octopus. We have echinoderms that include um, cucumbers, orchids, and sea stars. We have arthropods, including uh, crabs, shrimps, lobsters. 
And then we have the uh, chordates, which include all the animals that have a, a, a nervous uh, cord, right? Uh, that can be fish, turtles, ray sharks, whales, and all the vertebrates that we know. So the one that we're talking about during this course is the Nidarian filum. The Nidarian filum includes the corals, but also hydroids and also jellyfish, as we know them in uh, popular words, right? So in this case, we are just going to be talking uh, about a small part of the Nidarian animals. In this case, it is the Anthozoa class, as you can see on this uh, graphic, which is one of the classes from the Nidarian filum that compiles all the different species of coral. So the class Anthozoa is divided into three subclasses, the Octocoralia, Hexacoralia, and Serantaria. Okay, these are the main subclasses in which we can group the different species of coral that you can find here in Roatan or basically around the world, right? So um, in the Octocoralia subclass, what we have is what we know as soft corals. And there is, there is like 3,000 species of corals within these uh, subclass. And it includes the fan corals, gorgonian sea pens, and many other different species of soft corals, right? They move, they are uh, soft, they are not stony corals, as the ones included on the subclass Hexacoralia. Hexacoralia is a subclass that includes all the stony hard corals. And there are more than 4,300 species within this subclass, right? And uh, this includes the different types of coral that we know as branching corals, massive corals, encrusting corals, uh, digitate corals, and many more as you're going to see in the following slides. Uh, and then the third subclass is uh, a group of, of corals that are anemone-like, right? They, they look like an anemone, but they are actually corals. And they are solitaire corals that live at the bottom of the ocean, usually in areas where they have lots of, of uh, mud and organic materia uh, at the bottom. So within these three subclasses, we can classify all the corals. And my point here is that within the coral conservation specialty, it is important to learn how to classify the corals. Obviously, you're going to be a coral specialist. So you need to understand if when you see a coral, you're talking about a soft coral or octocoralia coral, or if you're talking about a hard coral or a stony coral, which is the hexacoralia coral. Right, so this is part of the content of the course. As I said at the beginning, I'm not elaborating a lot on the, on the content of the course. I'm just giving you a quick brief on what the course is about. Also, corals can be classified according to the shape they have, right? So in this case, what we have is several categories in which we can classify the corals, okay? So we have branching corals, like the uh, staghorn, for example, we have bushy corals. There is lots of different species here in Roatan of bushy corals. Then we also have plate corals. The plate corals are like the lettuce coral, for example, that is very common here in Roatan in very shallow waters. Um, we have digitate corals. We have massive corals like the brain coral that you can see on Bob's photos on, on the, on the uh, left. Right here we have these uh, corals, brain corals. And we have also um, uh, staghorn coral on, on, uh, underneath the brain corals. And we have a lettuce coral on the left lower corner. So you can see the different species according to the different shapes they have, right? We have also encrusting corals like the star coral that we showed at the, at the beginning of, of this Facebook Live. And also we have soft corals, which include all the sea fans that we were talking before. So as you can see, there is, uh, different ways in which you can learn how to classify the corals. You can go uh, using the scientific name and octocoralia, hexacoralia, or serantaria uh, subclasses. And obviously there is lots of families within, within each of those subclasses. Or you can just classify the corals according to the shape they have. In this case, as we saw, the branching corals, the bushy plate corals, uh, digitate corals, massive corals, and crossing corals, and so on. So, now that we know during the course, we, we have already learned how to classify the corals, then we need to understand what's a coral reef, right? So basically when we're talking about a coral reef, we are talking about the structure that is formed by the living corals, uh, right? And the skeletons of uh, old corals or dead corals, and also 
other solid structures that you find at the bottom of the ocean. It might be rocks, it might be like uh, different uh, uh, objects that you can find on, on underwater, right? So basically a coral reef, it is a structure, but it's alive because we have seen that the corals are animals that are alive and they live on top of the structure that they are building. This is also very important for all of you that have seen corals. When, when you go to diving places, one of the recommendations that responsible dive centers are going to give you is not to kick the corals, not to touch the corals, not to step on the corals because you are going to kill the animals. Remember, the bone is under the animals and they live on top. They grow on top of the, of the bone, of the skeleton. So if we kick it with the fin or if we stop on top of them, we can not only break them, but we also kill all the animals in the surface that we are touching or that we are kicking. So we have to be very careful when we uh, go visiting these uh, impressive ecosystems, not to damage and ruin the beauty of, of the ecosystems that is the main attraction or the main reason why we got to that place in the first uh, case. So why are coral reefs so important? And this, this slide, this image that you can see here is from a, a documentary called Chasing Coral. For those of you that have not seen Chasing Coral documentary, I strongly recommend that you go see it if you're interested in learning more about corals. We also show this documentary within the course because we find that it is very uh, recent and compelling with all the information that you need to know as a coral specialist. So why it is so important? Because it is the home of 25 of the ocean's biodiversity. They are reduced to less than 5% of the surface of the oceans, but they are home to 25% of the species that live within the ocean. So they are very important in terms of biodiversity conservation. They are also nursery for different species, uh, both ecologically and economically important species. So if we didn't have uh, the coral reefs, we wouldn't have the recruitment, the uh, reposition of the different species that we fish and are part of the income that lots of, of people around the coastal areas uh, have just because they have the coral reef as an ecosystem that they can get resources from. Okay, and this relates to the following point, which is a source of food and employment. There is one billion people around the world that rely on the coral reefs. And uh, the coral reefs also generate an income that is estimated in $36 billion every year. And this is taking into consideration everything that we take out of the reef, but also the use that we generate from the reef without extracting resources, like visiting the reef. So this includes all the, the money that people that go visiting coral reef spend on hotels, traveling, uh, services, food, and many other amenities as they go visiting a coral reef or a, a reef area, right? A reef country. Because they are a tourism attraction and also they have a very important role in filtering uh, carbon dioxide from the water, right? Uh, as a living organism, they are part of the food web and they, as we're going to see in the following slide, play, play a very important role in the uh, productivity of the ecosystem. Also, and, and it is very important as well to mention it, that the corals as a structure are uh, protecting the shores. And it is estimated that only in the United States, uh, the coral reefs uh, play a service or they give a service, they provide a service to the US coasts that is valuable as in $94 million every year. It means that if we didn't have the coral reef, the United States would need to invest $94 million every year to, uh, to uh, comp uh, how do you say this, how to, to compensate the damage caused by floods or uh, waves or storms on the, sh on the coastal areas, on the shore areas. So they are basically very important ecosystems, not only because we want to visit them and we want to see the beautiful fish, but also because they provide lots of services that are very important for uh, the, the humanity itself, right? So now we can see in this slide, uh, this is also something that we talked on the Underwater Naturalist Facebook Live, so I'm going to go very fast. This is a food web and a food chain, right? And basically what we see here is how the energy flows. From the energy of the, of the sun, 
goes into the ocean, right? And the little tiny uh, phytoplankton transform that energy into biomass. And that biomass is then uh, cascaded into different other levels of the food chain or the food web. So then we have microorganisms that eat on the phytoplankton, and then we have animals that feed on the zooplankton that eat the phytoplankton. So then it becomes a, a cascade, a, a chain, right? And corals in this case are consumers in, in, in a way because they are feeding on different uh, microorganisms known as zooplankton, living tiny microscopic organisms that float within the current. So they are feeding on these organisms, so therefore they are part of this uh, food chain. But at the same time, they have a, a very important role because they build the structures for lots of these species within the food chain to shelter, reproduce, find food and survive. So if we wouldn't have the coral reef, we wouldn't have the productivity, meaning that less species would be able to live and survive in a given area. So again, this is something we have already uh, spoken on the underwater naturalist course. I just want to give you want to give you an idea of what we talked about during the course. Also, uh, we talk about invasive species, right? So lionfish, for example, here in the Caribbean, in the Caribbean, is is uh, causing a great damage because it, it is unbalancing the uh, the food chain, the food web, and the natural ecosystems, right? So imagine a species like the lionfish that it is eating the secondary consumers on that graphic, right? So if that population disappears, then the tertiary consumers would not have enough food. So that population is going to decrease as well as the quaternary consumers. But then the primary consumers are going to increase because they don't have a, a biological control, a species that is feeding on them that controls the growth of the population. So when this starts like unbalancing the ecosystem, we can have uh, unwanted results like growing of algae, like uh, overgrown populations that become a plague and so on. So it is something that we also cover during the course. So we are aware of, of these problems related to invasive species. So corals are very important, but they are also very threatened and endangered. Why are the corals endangered? This is a key um, uh, knowledge that we, we need to provide to the coral conservation specialist, right? Because we need to understand what are the sources of the, of the problem, so then we can find solutions and address those problems to help protect and conserve the coral reef, the different species of corals. So what are the, the main problems that are threatening the corals at this point? So we have pollution because of all the wash out, uh, the wash down, the run down that gets to the ocean, right? That includes solid waste, water, everything that we throw into any given space is going to end going down and flushing down to the oceans. There is also climate change and you know the temperature, the mean temperature of the planet is increasing and also the temperature of the water is increasing. And as the, temp as the oceans get warmer, then the corals cannot survive because it, the temperature breaks basically the symbiotic relation between the source and tail algae that lives with the coral and the coral. So basically the corals die if they have a warm temperature. Also, the level of the ocean is rising. So the corals are getting deeper and deeper just because of the level of the ocean going higher. And that, that is also a problem for the capturing of light of, of, or getting enough and quality light for the source and tela algae that leads with the coral to be able to make the photosynthesis process. Also, there is an acidification of the ocean. This is given because of the uh, melting of the poles, right? So there is lots of fresh water integrating, coming down to the oceans. So the salinity of the ocean is changing. And this is causing also the uh, coral populations and the coral reefs to decline very fast. Even in places where there is no presence of uh, humans, as you can see, for example, in the top three pic uh, pictures that you can see here, this is a picture from the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, and you can see the whitening of the corals in areas where there's no presence of human beings. And, and basically, the only humans that have been to those places are the ones that took the photos. So this is something that is happening everywhere in tropical areas where the temperature of the water or the acidification of the oceans is happening. Also, there is uh, overfishing. And you know that there are lots of different species that we like to, uh, to eat. To, and there is lots of people that would like to fish these species because there is a, a market for those species like lobsters, uh, 
punks, uh, snappers, uh, sea cucumbers, for example, and many other, right? I'm just mentioning some that are close to shore, but you know, we, we can also mention sharks and we could also mention tunas and many other species that are being overfished around the world. And basically, if we go back to the food web, when we are overfishing, we are causing unbalance, different um, uh, disequilibriums on the ecosystem. And that is going to, at the end, uh, produce a declination of the coral reef and the different coral species that live within the, the reef. Also, corals have diseases, right? So one of the diseases that we have here on, on Roatan is the stony coral uh, tissue. The What was it called? Is the... the Whatever tissue this is, white band disease. White band disease, exactly. Thank you, Peter. Uh, the white band disease, which is one of the diseases that affects the corals and is also creating uh, a tendency on the declination of the of the coral species, right? Over visiting in places that are crowded with uh, tourism is also a problem. And also we have already talked about invasive species. So corals are very important, but are endangered but there is also lots of actions that are being done, being taken uh, to try to preserve, conserve the beauty of the uh, coral reef, the different species of coral, and in some cases, bring the corals back after uh, extinction events or uh, declination events, right? So we have here, as a guest, we have Peter Kokish, who works uh, with the Bay Island Reef Restoration Initiative and he is going to talk to us about uh, the uh, Bay Island Reef Restoration Initiative. Welcome, Peter, to this Facebook Live. Hello, yeah. Thanks, Fabio, for inviting me. Uh, my name is Peter Kokish. I'm an open water scuba instructor working for Bay Island Reef Restoration. And uh, I just want to give you a brief idea of what we are actually doing here. We also have our own distinctive specialty um, called the Bay Islands Reef Restoration Distinctive Specialty written by our Coral Restoration Manager, Trip Thunderberg. What we are planning to um, transmit a separate Facebook Live later. So this is why I'm not going too much into detail. Um, okay, so let's start. Um, what are we doing here? We um, try to uh, compensate all these issues uh, Fabio has been talking about. And the biggest issue is um, indeed uh, a macroalgal phase shift, what we are facing since the last three decades. So that means um, I, our coral or earlier coral dominated uh, reef became into an algal uh, dominated reef caused by several reasons. And as Fabio already explained, this is uh, mainly human impact yeah, due to fertilization overfishing. Overfishing means like also a lot of herbivore species um, increase, uh, decreased um, in their abundance and um, also like water temperature uh, rises every year uh, more and more and that causes of course the algae um, more to grow um, what restricts a further coral uh, recruitment. Yeah, So because the algae takes over the place where the coral could start growing and since there's no space that restricts coral recruitment, yeah. So what we are doing basically is um, we um, um, have, we are collecting coral fragments, put them in small pieces, as we can see on the picture, that is our coral restoration manager, uh, Trip, um, who has like one coral fragment in his hands, attached on this coral fragment, we see a monofilament, yeah, and this monofilament will be attached to a tree, so we can have about 60 coral fragments on one tree, and um, mainly we focus on two different species here in our uh, project. This is uh, one's Acropora cerviconis, what is also called um, stackhorn coal, or Acropora palmata, also known as alcorn coal. These are the two main key species, key reef building species here in the Mesoamerican uh, reefs. And they are also fortunately the fastest growing uh, corals what gives us uh, the best opportunity to reach a result in the short term. Um, so then you can see in the next picture, um, the corals are hanging on this, uh, on the monofilament on the tree. And here comes uh, the part what requires most of our time and effort. And this is maintenance and cleaning because the same thing what happens on the reef happens also um, on the trees, algae is growing and to uh, make sure that we keep our corals alive, 
we have to clean them very frequently in an ongoing process. That means after every seven to 10 days, um, we have to go down with our scuba gear. You can see that's me in that picture. Um, it's uh, also um, related with a lot of fun, but also like a lots of work. And um, yeah, then we have brushes and scrapers and try to get uh, rid of uh, this algae. Then the uh, most crucial part uh, in this case is um, that spot where the monofilament goes uh, into the coral. This is, this is um, kind of the, the spot where the coral is the most vulnerable and uh, this is where we have to pay most of our uh, attention. So, and then uh, after like nine or 10 months, uh, we see Fabio here uh, with a one, one egg crate in his hand. Uh, we collect and harvest corals. That means we cut uh, fragments of the mother corals. We leave uh, a part on, on the tree still left, yeah, that it can regrow and we can again re-harvest. So this is also like an ongoing process. Then we also make sure that we um, um, cut always like in cluster. That means on one tree, that is one genotype. And when we are outplanting, we always outplant in a cluster of 10 corals. And um, we, we attach them to the reef very close. There's like a rule of thumb, what works really well and easy to memorize. So we have a hammer and we scrape off the algae first to make sure that we can attach it in a proper way and that the algae is not taking over the coral uh, right away. Then we have an epoxy um, clue, a two component epoxy, what we mix underwater 50-50, what hardens in, in like in about like 30 to 45 minutes. And yeah, now we come to the rule of thumb, we have the hammer, we scrape off the algae in an Oreo size, then we take a blueberry size of this epoxy, attach it to um, the reef and form a Hershey kiss in which we plant the coral in a three point of contact to make sure that it's not gonna move or not getting swept away by some tidal or wave actions. Yeah, and um, this is um, mainly what we are doing um, in our coral restoration project. As I said, this is just only a brief idea for you what we are doing here. If you are uh, want to have more information, um, don't hesitate to hit us up on our um, email address shown in the next um, slate here. And um, yeah, and as mentioned, we also plan to transmit another session where we're getting more into detail in our Bay Island uh, Reef Restoration Distinctive Specialty. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Peter, for that explanation. Um, this is You're also welcome. very important to, to mention, Peter forgot to mention that uh, there is how many trees in, in Roatan with this initiative that we are putting out so the in, our initiative, uh, we are not the only ones, or so there are like a few more, but we have in total 30 trees and there are 10 more trees waiting um, to put down um, to the reef so that we can increase our capacity. That means we also need a lot of help. So, exactly. So <laughs> that's that's the point I was going to mention. So um, that's why you see a go GoFundMe campaign right there, because on, if you go on the Facebook page of the Bay Island Reef Restoration Initiative, you will find the link for the GoFundMe. And basically, this initiative is uh, receiving the, the, the cooperation of all the people interested in, 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 you know, promote the restoration of the reef or contribute to the restoration of the reef. So if you have questions, you can send uh, an email to you, subwaywatersports.com. Or uh, you can go into the Facebook uh, page of the Bay Island Reef Restoration uh, at that uh, uh, link that you can see on the upper uh, page on the upper slide. And there you will find the GoFundMe link to uh, contribute if you want on, on, the, on this initiative. So it's very important that we know uh, as part of the coral conservation, going back to the, the coral conservation course. Thank you, Peter, for the explanation. Uh, it is very important that the coral specialists know that uh, the corals are different species, that they can be classified according to different um, uh, subclasses and families and different shapes, that the corals are very important and they also need to know that the corals are threatened or endangered. And they also need to learn that there are many initiatives like the Bay Island Reef Restoration that they can be a part of and they can promote and help on, or support this initiative 
to make the restoration of, of the uh, corals of the reef easier and uh, contribute in some way with a little uh, grain uh, of, of sand, as we say in Spanish, to the restoration of these important ecosystems. So once again, uh, this is a very important uh, initiative and we want to thank also Bob uh, Herb for the, the photos that we have been thank using you, during, during this uh, presentation. Thank you, Bob, for the amazing photos. We hope all of you have enjoyed the, uh, the presentation. Right, so we have gotten to the end of this uh, Facebook Live. Uh, we're going to do many more Facebook Live in the upcoming weeks. We're going to talk of, about the fish identification course. We're also going to talk about uh, the, uh, the self-reliant course. We're going to talk about the uh, initial basic tech courses that we teach. So there's more courses for you to stay uh, uh, just visiting the, the Facebook page so you can be aware of the next Facebook live transmissions that we're going to be doing. If you have any questions, please, please uh, go to our, go to our uh, page. You can see there Roatan Dive Academy. GoPro at RoatanDiveAcademy.com is our email. You can send us an email and we will gladly answer any of these questions that you may have. So uh, thank you all for for watching and uh, see you next time on the next transmission that we do with Roatan Dive Academy.